Hello everybody, welcome to the first installment of my new reinforcement learning series. Today, we're going to be teaching a computer to play Minecraft. Before we begin, we have to figure out what it even means to play Minecraft. As anyone who's looked up Minecraft on YouTube knows, there's a huge amount of variation in how the game is played in the community. For example, we could try to have our Baka all the way to fight the Ender Dragon, but for the purpose of this video, let's take it easy on the computer by sticking true to the game's name. Specifically, we'll reward the computer with increasing points for collecting dirt, stone, coal, iron, gold, and finally diamond. Now that we understand the basic goal of the game, I want to give you a brief roadmap for where all of this is headed. The project is split up into three main components. A neural network, which will make decisions, a Minecraft simulator, which will train the network, and a Minecraft mod, which will visualize our network's learned behavior. First, let's talk about neural networks. I'm sure some of you are familiar with neural networks, but if not, since this is the first episode of the series, let's do a quick crash course. Here's a network now. The nodes in the left are input nodes. They just take in a number. These lines here are called weights, and they are simply factors that the number gets multiplied by. The nodes they are connected to are called the middle layers, which have the value of the sum of the weights they are connected to. Finally, on the right we have the output nodes. Whichever node is the highest value at the end of the process is typically considered the network's chosen node. This network is going to be the brain of our player. Now we just have to figure out how to compress playing Minecraft into a series of inputs and outputs that can fit into it. To do so, let's think about how humans play Minecraft. We move around with the WASD keys. We look around with the mouse. We dig by clicking the mouse. And we jump by pressing the spacebar. So, our bot should be able to walk forward, turn right, turn left, look up, look down, dig, and jump. These will be the output nodes of our network. Our bot should also make decisions like humans. People make decisions in the game by looking at blocks on their screen. So, it would be unfair to just tell our bot where every block in the game is. Instead, we should employ a technique called ray casting, which will shoot lines from the bot's point of view that will collide with blocks. These blocks will be the input to our network. We'll also let our bot cheat a little bit, because humans cheat when playing Minecraft too. So, we'll let it know it's a vertical position in the world. Now that we're oriented, first things first, we need to code a neural network. We now have a C++ static library that simulates neural networks and can be used for a lot of future projects. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, you can check it out on GitHub using the link in the description. Next, we need a simulator that our bot can play in. But before we jump back into development, let's revisit the roadmap to better understand why we need it. The job of the simulator is to train the network with reinforcement learning by running millions of Minecraft games. The basic process looks like this. We first create an instance of the world in our simulator and assign a neural network to the instance. Then, we create 99 copies of the bot, each with slightly different neural weights than the others. This process is called mutation, and it mirrors genetic mutation in evolution. With all 100 instances loaded into memory, we start the game and let each of the bots try to collect as many points as possible. The bot who gets the most points is selected as the winner and their neural weights are passed to the next generation, or epoch. By repeating this thousands of times, we eventually get better and better bots. This is all great, but we still don't even know how to load a Minecraft world into C++ in the first place. After taking some time to conduct a bit of research, I found a few programs that can help us achieve this. First, we'll load a Minecraft world into MCEdit. 
In MCEdit, we can select the region of the world we'd like to load into our simulation and then export it as a schematic. From here, we can use a rather obscure terminal-based program that I found on GitHub to convert the schematic file into JSON. Once the file is in JSON format, it's straightforward to load the blocks into our simulator, and the rest of the work is all standard logic. With this as a starting point, let's go ahead and implement these ideas in code. You may have noticed a few cuts during that time lapse. Honestly, it just would have taken too long to show the whole process. There's a lot of nuance that had to be omitted from the video, like dealing with the character's rotation and thread management. But all we need to know now is that we have a working Minecraft simulator for our neural network to play in. As such, after spending a while looking for interesting worlds to simulate, I decided it would be best to start off with an empty field and just see what happens. So I'll go ahead and load this world into the simulator and get the training started. While that's running, let's get started on Minecraft mod to visualize the network's behavior. This mod was a lot more work than I was expecting. But we now have an AI mob, which can read in data files from our network and visualize whatever decision the network makes. For example, walking, digging, or looking around. In the meantime, our network wrapped up training. To offer some more context while we watch its progression, here's a visualization of the network the bot was trained on. As you can see, it's a lot more complicated than the toy models we were exploring earlier. In total, there are about 11 million parameters, or weights, in the network which theoretically will allow our bot to learn complex behaviors. Let's take a look at how its evolution progressed. Alright, jokes aside, let's take a look at the final epoch this version of the network was trained on. As we can see, the network is exhibiting some complex behavior, like looking down and jumping to dig ores it otherwise couldn't access. However, watching it for the most part just dig straight down isn't exactly satisfying from a human point of view. I'm going to try to address this next. 
To promote more dynamic digging styles, we'll basically just stop rewarding the bot for digging straight down too many times in a row. This feels a bit like cheating to me, but it does make sense, as one of the oldest rules in Minecraft is to never dig straight down, or you'll probably end up in a pool full of lava. I'm also interested in how the network might evolve with a bit of variation, so I've scoped out a new world for a bot to explore. Most notably, the location starts in a cave, which, when combined with our new rule, I'm hoping will promote more organic mining techniques. I'll preface this next time lapse by saying I'm extremely pleased and impressed by what the network was able to accomplish. It exhibits quite complex behavior, and was even able to creatively find an exploit to one of the bugs in my simulation code. See if you can find it while you watch. I really hope you think that was as awesome as I do. It honestly exceeded my expectations for what the network would be able to figure out. Also, if you didn't catch it, the bug in my simulator was that I didn't check if there was a block above the bot before they jumped, but since the final network didn't end up relying on the bug, I'll just let it slide. As a final point of interest, let's take a look at what the evolved neural network looks like. Here, the weights that are close to negative one are green, weights that are close to zero are black, and weights that are close to 1 are blue. There seems to be some non-random structure visible in the network, but to get a better idea of how it's working, let's watch it make some decisions. With that, I'm happy calling this project a success. That said, if any of you are interested in running some tests of your own, all of the code used in this project can be found on my GitHub page, so feel free to go wild and let me know if you make any interesting progress. I have another reinforcement learning project coming out soon that I'm really excited about, involving a specific board game. So in the meantime, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.